I'm going to lean into the camera for this one. Because this one is a summary and a markdown of everything that has happened since I went public with my story of what Natalie Casanova did to me by denouncing and defaming my name, using her platform, and telling defensively false lies about me. Effectively, if we look at the whole situation with what's happening with Twitch and how it's on fire and burning and they're constantly getting roasted every single day because they refuse to uphold what they claimed was supposed to be their standard for business. It was me. I did it. It was me who lit the fire. But why? Why did I do that? Why did I tell the truth when a female streamer known for abusing people on the internet and lying about what she does and what she did and who she's with and who she tries to tie to and the motivations behind what she does. Why did I out her and end up starting a bonfire that lit the entire platform ablaze? I wanted to do this video early because before the computer broke down, this was the story I was supposed to break before I was supposed to do something else for somebody who asked me to do it. And I have to do that after I get response from them about how they want me to do the request. Because that, on another track of thought, I'm supposed to do a recording of that. But I thought, mm, the request, it's supposed to be something that's supposed to be happy, it's supposed to be happy, it's supposed to be light, it's supposed to be fun. Recording it and sending it to them, I don't feel like that's exactly, you know, it's not popping. I want the jokes to come fresh off the dome, so I want them to be in the audience for that. But on the topic of this, why did I have effectively what was a slap fight that I won with Natalie Casanova? Why did Natalie Casanova bip your big twitch girl on the internet? Why did I have a slap fight with her? And how did a sub a thousand follower account win an optics war? against someone who should have the power to ratio and bury him. Well, if I use my natural octave, the reason why is because she could not get away from the truth. I made a video and a live stream demonstrating everything that needed to be known about Natalie Casanova's personality, her attitude, her disposition, and ultimately how she views people. And not just like Jake, of Hugo and Jake, who I went on live stream with and spoke to. And when I say spoke, I mean baited into doing exactly what I wanted him to do. He did the same thing she did, which was expose themselves as not for their communities, as grifters. Because you see, the reason why all that happened was because of Ninja. Right? There was whispers in the water. I've been investigating it. There's been whispers in the water that he was going to switch platforms because Ninja, being the top streamer, obviously has feelers and he can see the same problems that exist. He knows that Twitch is not treating male streamers or female streamers equally. He knows that for a fact, either because he knows from his own involvement with them and them giving him special treatment, or because of his contracts with them and him talking to other streamers when he goes out to events and, you know, networks with them. But they know that it's an unequal balance. You have people who, if they're the beautiful people, the ones who are protected by Twitch, they'll get away with it. They'll get away with anything they do. You can be Amaranth and you can say the N-word on your stream. You can be... <coughs> you can be Nicole Slaw crying about how Caseytron is getting more subs than you because you, like Natalie, are a younger or an older woman on the way up in her age, that's eventually on the way out and going to be replaced by a hotter, sexier, more desperate model. You've got girls who don't even buy the game that they're supposed to be streaming and are just playing it off of a video, making thousands of dollars towards what they claim is supposed to be buying a dream house. You've got female streamers as an entire collective treating people like less than human because Amaranth can be able to not just say in word on the stream. She can also be able to act like she's the victim with one of her members of her black audience, whether it be a moderator or it be something else, comes to her and says, why did you say that? 
Why are you behaving like that? Same thing with S.T. Peach. Same thing with a lot of them. Why is that happening, you might ask? It's because Twitch knows that the party's coming to an end very, very soon. The reason it's coming is because they've been treating everybody poorly. Let's go over the evidence as we see it. Let's go through what I have here. Make sure I have everything where I need it to be. So you can see it, so you know it's real. Here are my bookmarks. We have the Clixer, the, the Mixer clothing guidelines, as was complained about by sleeping, like by, by sleeping me of one four, 40 teen five. My eyes can't work. The rating system for these things was very simple. It's so that you can have rules that are consistent while streaming on Mixer. Mixer rules are very straightforward. They don't want titty streamers. If you look at these rules, they read like I would write them. They, they read like they're the actual clothing standards of a girl going to high school. Why? Because these platforms are supposed to be for gaming. They're not supposed to be for cam whoring. And the audience knows that, but Twitch doesn't care. Twitch does not care if their entire audience is stroking it. That's why when it became very clear and very obvious that things were bad, it was because there was porn showing up there. And I think I have that in here somewhere. Somewhere that's in here, if I can find it. Hopefully, if I tagged it. No, I'm not seeing it. Gonna have to search for it. There we go. <clears throat> right here. Up on the stream. On Ninja's page. They were showing actual porn on the website. This, Tyler Blevins can sue them for. Because he just wanted to have these things taken down. He never wanted to expose people to this. And yet, that's what Twitch did. When... They took his name and they slandered it by putting this right there next to his brand. This is the worst thing they, they could have done. Much like how Natalie's worst case scenario, when she came to me and said what she said, which we can all see if you go to the moments or if you go to the video that's on the channel, it, you see in the section, I'm telling her, I know what you're doing. I know what you're saying. Why don't you just come, tr just tell the truth. We, we know what it's about. We all see the problem. The writing's on the wall. Just tell the truth. We're at the point with Twitch <coughs> where the platform is what it is because it is what it is. You know? It's, the, it's quite literally the new form of 4chan for users on Twitch. Everybody has the chance to go to this place you know, go to the several sections and watch the games and the streamers they want to watch. But there's always the always chatting and just chatting section. That's just filled with the kind of girls and guys that you can be able to have fun with. That will sell you softcore porn. They don't care if you sub to them. They're not going to remember your name the next day. Sub to people like Jake. He'll belittle you on your stream. He'll belittle you on his stream. While trying to get more people to sub to him. Because he doesn't give a shit. Because it's gotten this bad, it's one of those places that you don't want to go there, but you have to go there. Twitch is where most people are going. It's the easiest place where a person can support someone on the platform. By the way, second show of the day. Please go to the Twitch channel. Please come to the YouTube channel. Please come to the Twitter and all the monetization pages for donation down in the description. Go to those places, sub to those things, send me some money if you feel like I deserve it. Because the platforms as they exist, Twitter is not suit for function. It's a shit place. Twitter is horrible, and so is Twitch. Twitch is not suited for function. It's a horrible place. And both of them work together to create the nonsense that creates the drama that brings people to those places. No, I'm not saying that's horrible. 
You know, shit talk happens every single day. Sometimes you go on Twitch, you go onto a person like Hassan Piker, Hassan Piker saying, hey, Dan Crenshaw, Republican senator, no, not even senator, representative, representative of Texas. He got fucked in the eye hole by a member of the Mujahideen. And also, America deserved to be bombed by people who they were giving stuff to. Was he, was it spicy? Yes, it was. Was it something he should have been banned for? Eh, honestly, no. But we're at the point where we have to see the ban happen. I'm not for it. I don't like it. Because it's the encroachment of free speech. It's salty, and it's also spicy. But it will self-regulate itself, right? It'll self-regulate itself because Hassan already said worse things. He said the similar ratiable things. You know, it was when he pushed back against the female. I can't, I still can't recall her name. And I don't care enough to go look for it. You can probably find it if you Google it. Where he said he hated women because people were dunking on him because he went against somebody of his political leanings. And then when this happened and he got suspended for a week, he had to go on the Young Turks, Daddy, he big big uncle Chank had to tell him, "Oh no no no, you have to you have to say you're mea culpas, Mister. Seventy mea culpas, and I'm sorry for being an asshole. And then we can let you have your shit back." It's it's an embarrassment. It's an honest fucking embarrassment. Twitch as a platform is not going to be suited for function until it has a proper rival. Mixer as it is, it's going to be growing every day. Because you know, for the same reason I had people come in and help me. It's just going to be growing every day. Because nobody wants to deal with this anymore. We've all seen the writing on the wall. But nobody's been wanting to come forward and be the first one to say something. It's why I've been going onto the platforms talking to people. It's why I've been doing what I'm doing. You're noticing that all of these individuals... That's a subject, by the way. It came to my mind just now. I'll talk about that one next. It's a subject that keeps coming up. Because you keep seeing these people. People like her. People like Jake. People like Aaron Hansen. People like the creators over at Extra Credits. What do they keep saying when they get ratioed like this? Oh, none of these people will talk to us. They're just a whole bunch of random harassers on the internet. They're anons. Nobody's willing to show their face. It's why I've been showing my face on camera. It's why I have a picture of myself in my linked bio. That's something I'm going to have to talk about too when we, get to, when we get on the subject of Jake. I got something for that ass. Oh, yes, I do. Especially with how badly he lied and how he badly performed on his live stream. Ooh, daddy, I'm gonna get in your butthole. Oh, you better protect that unprotected boy pussy. But, um, it's the reason they've been saying this over and over again, right? Especially when it comes to the problem with Twitch. You have creators and content producers that are treating their audiences like pay pigs, unironically. They know that they don't care and that they just want to see somebody get dragged. They're trying to turn Twitch into a website for internet blood sports, random sex paraphernalia, and some weird ass fetish strings. Now I'm not saying you can't have it. It's already existed before. I mean, if you were a sub of Helena Live, you were actually a sub and a dom sub relationship. Not gonna lie. And honestly, also not lying, I would rather have 30 Helena Lives than have any one of the Twitch sisterhood. Why? Because Helena Live was honest. She was honest. She was there to make your money. She was there to make some money. She wanted the attention. She wanted the time. She wanted you to simp to her. And she was not lying when she did it. It's hilarious as shit when she's trying to stand between her audience and her mom, trying to protect her from the rabid dogs that she trained. It's, it's content. That's, that's quality content. That's hilarious as fuck. I'd watch that every other weekend than watch anything the rest of these girls do. They probably would say the same thing about me. The difference is, I actually give a shit about my audience. I'm at the point where I'm so small, I appreciate every single person. And even if I was big, I'd still appreciate every single fucking person. Because they forgot what made Twitch what it is. Community. Camaraderie. Collectiveness. Cooperation towards this common goal. That's literally what put Twitch on the map. Remember, 2014 was when it was purchased by Jeff Bezos. Why? Because of Twitch Plays Pokemon. All of those people coming together to play something that they've been playing since their youth? 
in both democracy and anarchy to get to the end of the game and see success happen only was made possible because of all those people. That was when they saw the potential of how they could get all of those people laser focused on the one thing. And then as the years went by, literally for the entire length of the career of one Natalie Casanova, the site started to turn into something else. You couldn't have fun anymore. You couldn't have the excitement anymore. You couldn't have the wild shit anymore because they banned it. They took away the things that brought them the attention that they got, and they tried to sanitize it and make it into a place that was completely different than the audience it originally attracted, because they were trying to attract something that was not already interested in the platform. What was that thing? I'll let you speculate. But I'll put it to you like this. They're not going to be having any fun with Dan Sexy any, near, any time in the future with games done quick. I hope Frame Fatales does good. Because it should be worth every single person you had to ban to get it. That's the kind of audience that they're trying to pander to now. That's the kind of excitement they're trying to get now. They can't succeed because every time they do something, they get dragged for it. Because everybody knows that they're being hypocritical. They're not siding with the content creators. They're not siding with the producers. They're not siding with the people. They're siding with the mob. The mob does not know what it wants. Because the mob wants power. The, the people leading the mob want power. The mob just wants to attack. So the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. And the more that the mob tries to act on the benefit of its leader, the more the leader starts to look bad. Because it's not a case of, say, an audience member of one person. No, it's the audiences of all these people intercircling each other on the same issue. You have Gross Score doing it, you got Dark Side Phil doing it, you've got the majority of the girls in effect at this doing it, you've got Natalie doing it, you've got all of these people coming out and saying these messages. And it's becoming basically backed up. They're all woked out. They don't know how to go further. So now it's just breaking down. They can't consolidate and diversify the base of support. So Twitch's supports team can't do anything because everybody wants to be treated equally but nobody is so who is obligated to protect twitch except for the people who've already made money who, who's obligated to keep the gravy train rolling except for the people who've been stealing the gravy train from everybody else i can't wait till it comes down crashing and burning it, it's it's honestly exactly everything i wanted to be and more couldn't have hoped for a better campaign myself. And I didn't even really have to do anything but defend myself. You might have noticed, they're not t being so fucking loud anymore at me now, are they? Some of them claimed that they blocked us. Some of them claimed that we never mattered. Especially Natalie. And yet look. Look at what she's been doing recently. Look at what she's been trying to push. Look at the people around her who have been trying to push what they've been trying to push. You got those kinds of girls like Nicole and Natalie being terrified of the up-and-comers like Casey Tron. Hmm. Why? Why, Natalie? Are you scared by a couple of breasts perkier than yours? I hope not. That'd be a bad look. Now, wouldn't it? I'll see you guys next time. My throat is so dry.